Welcome back. Well, a lot of action when it comes to the primary market. So let's put the spotlight on Unicommerce e Solutions. It's of course a company that provides. It's a SaaS company which provides logistical uh, solutions to the clients as well. We have Kunal Bell, the promoter and non-executive director, and Kapil Makija, the MD and CEO of Unicommerce Solutions, joining us on the show right now. Hi, gentlemen. Um, good afternoon and congratulations on hitting the Dalal Street. I just wanted to begin by asking you, Kunal. It's a complete OFS. Um, could you help us understand why the investors? are looking for an exit at this point of time because clearly the money is not coming into the company so um what was the reason and rationale of doing an ofs at this point of time well thank you for having us here um, look unicommerce is a profit making company it's been profitable for many years and we generate free cash flow uh, we also have a substantial amount of cash on the balance sheet and given the company continues to generate free cash flow and has cash on the balance sheet. At this point in time, uh, we wanted to meet the statutory minimum of 25%, uh, because of which two of our shareholders are, are selling their shares. Uh, and if we have to raise primary capital in the future, we would consider that at the appropriate time. Okay, could you also talk to us about some of your clients, because uh, which have been your latest additions, any more in the pipeline? Because if we do have it right, uh, some of your client retention ratios, like the small and medium business client retention ratio, has been falling. Uh, so, you know, we have two, two key types of customers. We have enterprise customers and we have SMB customers, small medium enterprises. Um, the enterprise customers account for 90% of our revenues and the client base of enterprises has been growing every year. Enterprises by design are slightly more established businesses, more stable businesses, and they usually don't go out of business as much, which is not the case in the SMB segment. In the SMB segment, many times these are homepreneurs, these are small businesses that just started selling online and in three months or six months realized that they either ran out of capital or they changed their mind about the business. And so they would obviously maybe be shutting down their business. We obviously can't control these reasons for why these clients leave uh, us because usually they are no longer in business. Um, that said, that is a, uh, in revenue terms, just about around 10% of our business. And many of these SMBs actually historically have grown large enough also where they have become enterprise customers thereafter. So we see the SMB part of our business essentially as a funnel into the enterprise part of our business, which is actually 90% of our revenue. Right. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. The Shellos are joining in the conversation. And Kapil, let me come to you. The EBITDA margins have actually improved uh, to almost 14% versus 8% that was about two years ago. So do you see any more uh, levers for the expansion here? What's your outlook coming in for EBITDA margin? Yeah, so uh, this is a business where we have we see high gross margin as well as we see a very strong operating leverage in the business where as our revenues continue to grow and the, the various levers for our revenue growth are increasing transactions of our customers as well as addition of new customers plus addition of new products that we are selling to or cross-selling to some of our existing customers and addition of geographies. But as our revenue continues to increase, our costs do not increase in similar proportion. And that's why we see strong operating leverage in the business where a, a, a significant portion of our revenue growth can continue to go to our bottom line. And we have historically demonstrated where our PAT grew almost double in, from FI23 to FI24. So there is a significant operating leverage in the business and we have historically demonstrated not only consistent revenue growth, but expanding profitability. And this is a business which continues to generate cash on a regular basis as well. Right. Your company had like a negative cash flows uh, from operating, investing and financing activities in the past, actually. Uh, when do you see some sort of a turnaround uh, creeping over there? Uh, so we have seen uh, a considerable improvement in terms of our DSOs, uh, days of outstanding. So with, this is a business where the platform is very, very sticky. Uh, we have long-standing relationships with our customers and it becomes a lifeline for their business. 
our DSOs which used to uh, range at about uh, 55 odd days is now at, uh, now at about 45 days for us. So we have seen a very healthy improvement and as I mentioned we continue to generate free cash flow in the business and have seen expanding profitability. That is a result of a very sticky relationship that we have with our customers and more importantly a very very stable platform which becomes a lifeline for their e-commerce business. And to add to that, historically we have not seen a situation of having uh, any material uh, bad debts either. So that way the business is, because we are in effect the operating system for these brands, so uh, they, they, would, they would want to continue to keep it on for which they would need to continue to pay the bills. Okay, so that's a view coming in as far as uh, the overall profile is concerned, even on the margin fronts, etc. But what about revenue? Uh, do you expect the growth rate to continue at the current level or accelerate from here on? Our, our goal is to continue to be ahead of e-commerce growth rates uh, in the country. So when the e-commerce market was growing at 30% two, three years ago, we were growing at 50% in near, near about 50% in uh, annual revenue growth. Uh, last year was a very slow year for e-commerce uh, growth. Uh, I think it's it's uh, well demonstrated by the relatively sluggish growth in e-commerce shipment volume as well as the growth in revenues of some of the listed companies or soon to list companies in the uh, in the e-commerce marketplace space. Uh, that said, we grew ahead of the market uh, at 15 percent of revenue and during that time as Kapil mentioned, uh, we we saw our operating leverage really kick in where despite the 15% growth in revenue ahead of the e-commerce market growth, we, we doubled our PAT. Um, so going forward, our goal will be to continue to deliver e-commerce uh, market plus growth and obviously uh, a faster growth in uh, profits. All right, then, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on uh, ET Now to talk about the IPO, the way forward going uh, for the business. All the best, actually. Uh, for the IPO and look forward to connecting to, with you soon but let's if you like this video then like share and subscribe to ET now